Sheila Iron Bags, which, has, which was established six years ago. What exactly is it that you do and how did you come up with the concept of creating sweatshirts? Well, um, as you say, um, we make handbags for working women, so they have distinctive the compartments for everything that you need to take to and from the office, um, primarily tech and charges, two phones. Um, I don't know, I'm sure you would have experienced that Mary Poppins moment where you walk into a meeting and have to find the one thing that you need to find quickly and car. Yeah. Um, so we solve that problem. But as it happens, um, COVID started in March 2019 and lively stopped commuting for people because everybody was working from home. Mm. And we primarily solved the problem of organising your office to and from the commuting experience. Um, so... That was a massive blow for Sheila and because uh, it turns out people don't actually need a beautiful punch bag yeah. to organise their work here to move from the kitchen <laughs> to the home office. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I was at home in lockdown like everybody was. Um, I'd had a child in December 2019 um, and my second, and so I was at home with a three-year-old and a newborn. Yeah. And... Um, my team and I were really distressed about how many small businesses were really hurting um, and we wanted to do something like like ourselves we were hurting. We needed to do something to save the business and we knew we needed to do something quickly. Yep. Um, and, you know, freight and logistics had increased um, in cost a lot. Our sales had diminished obviously a lot because the product and the need for our product had largely disappeared. Yeah. Um, and so we knew we had to do something to do And I'm an avid fan of the slogan top and um, often was wearing slogan tops at home um, with my kids just to give myself a spring in my step and yeah. thought, you know, if we could make something that was end-to-end -end Australian made, every single element, yeah. um, that would be an amazing project. And ideally we could gather other small businesses like ourselves as many as we could, yep. um, that that would be an inspiring um, new, new, new product line to add to She Line. And yep. it would com be completely on brand. It would be about having something that was premium and practical, yep. something that was really beautiful and elegant, and something that absolutely inspired bold ambition and for people to walk fearlessly and feel empowered. So, walk us through it then. How many businesses were involved within that supply chain from start to finish in creating your stuff? 22 in total. Um, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's the pe they're the people. Then there was probably 20 that physically touched the product, and then you've got the um, PR and marketing as well. But they are also targeted for the B product. Yeah. There were 20 specifically that physically touched the garment uh, businesses. Did you expect that number to be that no, large? No, no, no. <laughs> um, but I think part of that is because we were targeting small businesses and um, we're a small business. So I think a lot of larger businesses would have many of those people in-house already in different roles. Um, and because we were targeting small businesses and specialist makers that were largely all based in Melbourne, yeah. um, that's why there ended up being as many as there were. Yeah. Uh, but it was just such a fantastic experience and everybody really got behind the concept. And um, sourcing in Australia is surprisingly difficult. Yeah. So I was very fortunate that because people were so passionate about the project, it was all about cross-referring and suggesting other contacts. So, so how long did that take? How did you manage to find the right um, clients and customers in terms of how did you manage to source that? Well, I had originally worked for quite a large fashion house when I was studying at law school and um, an amazing fashion house uh, that um, manufactures here. And I knew the garment manufacturer that they had used not personally, but I knew the name, yeah. and uh, that's sort of like 15 years ago, and um, Cole called them um, in lockdown and said, hey, I used to work at this label, I know you manufacture for them, is there any chance you'd be interested in this? And the owner, um, Phil Sources of CGT Australia, um, he yeah, thought the idea was really it. great, and he ended up spending like over two hours like, you know, or longer, I think. No, you need process. to stay out there. Completely opening his book of contacts, saying, you know, if you want to do this, you go no, here. No, sorry. You, that, you go here. 
try this. I'll cuddle you, you later. Have yeah. you thought about this? Have you thought about that? Like, I will, I promise. Um, completely blown away by the generosity of spirit and the time that he was willing to give to me yeah. uh, because he believed in the project. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, from there it grew. I reckon he gave me probably 10 to 15 different people to contact. Yeah. And then each of those people that I spoke to would give me other people to contact. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it grew from there. So um, can you help bring back local jobs really by doing this? I don't. I hope that I've brought awareness to that. Awareness I'm, a, I'm a small business, um, but I really hope that I've brought awareness and um, brought manufacturing again into the spotlight. I'm, I am by no means the first company to do Australian-made fashion, um, but I, I understand through the process that it is actually quite unique that we've done every single element in Australia. That is the unique piece, um, and the purpose of that absolutely was initially to support jobs and to support other businesses that were in pain. Yeah. But the added benefit has been um, that I have gained an insight into Australian manufacturing that I didn't realise. Um, and I feel so passionate about sharing that knowledge with everybody else that's outside of the fashion industry because mm. I think they should know. And it makes such a big impact on the Australian economy. Mm. Um, small business itself is like 97% of all business. Yeah. But then when you're talking about fashion and industry, the, the recent report that the Australian Fashion Council put together with EY, mm. and just in the last financial year, $27 billion has been contributed to our economy from Australian makers in okay. Australian yeah. fashion. So that is a really yeah. big, diverse ecosystem of people. That's just sure. that's not just designer yeah. labels. That's like textiles and, um, you know, pattern makers and garment manufacturers yeah. and retailers and the, the education area and, gosh, the ecosystem is huge componentry and um, it's, it's just massive yeah. and there are so many just jobs that could be stressed the whole, whole site and, 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 and the whole thing, thing. I can't just see, just I just need to record that, I'm really fucking stressed, can you go out please, like please go out, like, just give me half an hour. Brought that to the floor. So hopefully that there's more um, funding from government and infrastructure and support around that because, you know, if we can bring the jobs back here and support mm. Australians, that's, that's the end game, that's what we want and yeah. COVID has forced our hand to innovate in this space and um, I think that's necessary and, 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 you know, people need to know. Yeah, for sure. Now, Kate, um, what are some of the lessons that you learned through this experience by bringing back the manufacturing and tapping into our market? Oh, there are so many lessons. I was very naive going into it, even though I have a, um, a strong background in manufacturing overseas. Um, I think actually seeing every single technical element being done here in Australia um, really opens your eyes to the many, many different processes that are involved in bringing a garment to life. Yeah. And I think it really opens your eyes to having much greater control and awareness over the responsibility and ethical and sustainable pieces that are involved with bringing a garment to life. And then also actually understanding how many hands touch a garment and how many jobs yeah. you can support, even if you're just one person buying one thing that does cost a bit more that will last longer is actually paying so many different people ethically um, yeah. an Australian wage is is something that, you know, can make you feel good. Yeah. It's just a small thing, um, but it has a big impact. Did you now go and see them in person, these different manufacturers? Oh, absolutely. Well, who are they? Are they second, third generation or are they new to the game? Mostly, mostly second and third generation, yeah, and they felt like family, honestly. I um, had started the concept in July 2020. And then we didn't launch until June 2021. I'd had a sick child that pushed us out a little bit. He's fine now. Um, probably took about 10 months from concept to online sale, um, yeah. but 12 months officially to launch. And uh, I didn't meet anybody in the flesh until late January, early February. And honestly, it was like going in and giving these people a hug. Like these people feel like family mm. to me. Um and like amazing, amazing, generous people like Ralph Bonavio from Top Knit Fabrics like, yeah. was so patient with answering so many questions that I have about how to create the fabric and how he was weaving things and the, the type of um, quality that I wanted to achieve and the thickness, the GSM and how much elastin would it was in it and um, being incredibly patient with, with going through all of that with me and yeah. sending swatches by courier and um, goodness, all sorts of things. And then the pattern maker, Ella from Clothes Creative, just amazing, like multiple t 
text messages and videos about how to actually measure things myself because I didn't know how to do that. And then obviously Phil and Vicky's sources from CGT are absolutely above and beyond with how much time they have spent in completely skilling me up in garment construction and understanding fabrics and what will work and what won't work. Um, and then creating all of these amazing other connections for me. And then Val and Gwyneth Kurtz from the Industrial Screen Printers um, and organising the embroiders. They're also been amazing with soundboarding, you know, the business concept and working out pricing and how to, you know, figure everything out and the other elements and pulling all that together. Just honestly, I could talk to you for ages about all the different people, but yeah, um, blown away, blown away. Blown away. Mm. And how appreciating were they to have such a new project on their hands as well? I think they were thrilled because they understood that it was about raising awareness for Australian manufacturing yeah. and for really supporting local and putting your money where your mouth is type mm -hmm. thing and demonstrating this is the impact that, that we could have. Yeah. And if, um, you know, we had the ability to really encourage businesses from like a government level to bring on new apprentices and to have incentives around that mm -hmm. and um, to bring in more incentives around succession planning to make sure that that really is fostered and then obviously we need more componentry and we need to bring back a whole lot of the actual machinery that we don't have here anymore and then just generally I think some funding and around education and infrastructure generally for manufacturing because it's obviously hugely expensive to open a factory um yeah I feel like there should be a real push because it will make such a big impact on the economy and such a big impact on so many people's livelihoods and jobs. Yeah now Kate we're about to kick start this new series about those manufacturers who you dealt with as part of uh, this project and what exactly can they expect going forward within the next few episodes about them? You will hear the most inspiring stories about these people they are the humans behind the business the, the heart and soul behind the business uh, they tell you these amazing stories about where the fashion industry was 20 years ago and how that's transformed, how so much of it has gone overseas and how COVID has kind of shaken that up a yep. little bit and started a trend of bringing it back. Um, they have so many amazing ideas about how to make sure that is embedded going forward. Um, their, their stories of grit, their stories of resilience, their stories of um, very, very powerful um dedication to their business and um it's well worth the watch so manufacturing is in a way being revived you'd say i hope so yes i hope so what what else could we do i mean you touched base on you know apprenticeships and government funding and whatnot what else how can we raise the awareness for the newer generations coming on board I the newer kids in the block. I think it's about actually knowing that there are these people that do manufacture these things and there are makers here um, and the capabilities and skills that we do have in Australia. I think there is, um, it's difficult to know where to look because there's not like necessarily one specific place that's really easy to find people. I know the Fashion Council is building this amazing directory of um, makers and textile manufacturers and designers online but we need a whole lot more people to register on there so that they can be found um and that other, and you know be known about um i think that's a big piece uh there's i think and then the whole education piece about people wanting to buy local and support local and understanding what's involved to make a garment so they understand the pricing structure so about the pricing structure what have you learned what what is the difference between an item being so expensive or so cheap and my manufacturers in australia what is the difference the, the amount someone is paid, the labour costs, yeah, absolutely. I think um, people, myself included, we've got used to buying things at a much cheaper price mm. and that ties in with the whole fast fashion piece, which isn't sustainable either. Mm. I think, you know, going forward with everything that's happening with climate change and all the crazy things that are happening in the world at the moment with COVID and everything else, mm. um, I think that there is a real focus now on the circular economy and understanding what our carbon footprint is and being able to make sure what we're making is more environmentally friendly and looking more towards a slow fashion model um, and bringing that um, you know, awareness around how, how a garment is made back into Australia. Yeah. And by doing that, um, it, it does increase the cost, but it lasts so much longer exactly. and it's ideally not going to end up in landfills. Yeah. Um, so I think that that's all beneficial. Yeah. 
Now, where are you at with Shearline? What what else is new in store? Why it's coming up? Well, we're really excited to be releasing a um a washed black version of the sweatshirt soon, which will be exciting. They're going to have a glitter print on them, so something Beautiful. a little bit extra, <laughs> um, which is great. Um, and yeah, we've been thrilled with the response. It's just been magical, to be honest. Our our first run sold out really quickly, and our second run, the pre order is sold out as well. Um, so yeah, it's just um you know waiting to get everything um back on to online again because we are slow fashion it, yeah. it takes a couple of weeks to pull everything together but it's absolutely worth the wait it's the most beautiful product and it's so comfortable and um it's i know it's gonna last it. a long time <laughs> yeah yeah well thank you so much it's such a pleasure to see you in the flesh and to hear of your journey oh, in the studio with thank us. you for having me and for helping amplify this important message uh, i really appreciate that on behalf of all of us in the supply chain thank you pleasure thank you for sharing your story with us thank you <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.